In this video, we're going to go over the definition of what exactly an orthonormal basis is. Um, when we use the Gram-Schmidt process, that is how we find an orthonormal basis from a set of vectors. Uh, but first, I just want to make sure we know what it is. So um, just to remind you of a couple simple definitions of um, having to do with vectors that we're going to build off of. Uh, first is what does the word orthogonal mean? Um, and that means perpendicular. It means a right angle. Like that. Um, so here's a vector v. Here's a vector w. They make a right angle with each other. Therefore, they are orthogonal. Um, and another thing that we remember about uh, orthogonal orthogonality is that the dot product of two orthonormal vectors is equal to zero. So just remember that, store that away. Um, another uh, thing I want to bring you up to date on is uh, the concept of unit vectors. You may remember these. We have uh, a video describing them in much greater detail that I'll put the link to down below. Uh, and a unit vector is just a vector with length one. So we typically say a u for a unit vector. Um, and the length of that is one. So an example would be one zero. That just has a length of one, pretty obviously. Um, another example would be a half, a half, a half, a half. That's a vector in R4. And if you square each of those and add them up, you get one. Um, so hopefully you remember those uh, two concepts. That's um, orthogonal equal to perpendicular and this just this is just what a unit vector is okay um, so what is an orthonormal basis the first is that um, all the vectors in this basis uh, are unit vectors they all have a length of one The second is that they are all orthogonal. Um, they all make right angles with each other. Um, finally, and this uh, it basically goes without saying given this fact, um, but they're all linearly independent. Uh, and because of that, they, they are able to span um, whatever dimension that you're in. Um, so an orthonormal basis will look something like u1 u2 all the way up to un uh, for whatever rn you're in. I mean, however many dimensions. Um, I guess I should point out for it to be a basis to span all of rn, you need n, uh, n vectors total in this orthonormal basis. Um, so some examples of that would be the basis 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. These are what we typically know as i, j, and k when we're in um, calc 3 or something else like that. Um, just the, we can tell that all of them are unit vectors. They have a length 1. Um, they're all at right angles to each other. And they're obviously linearly independent because you can't create any one of them out of any other. Um, another example, this time in R2, is So 
sine, cosine, and cosine minus sine. Yeah, so um, these are also all unit vectors because you know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. Um, and minus sine squared is just sine squared. Um, they are also orthogonal because um, the, the triangle, the right angles, sine and cosine, they're going to be at different sides. Um, and these are in R2. Um, so we only need two of them, and they span all of R2. Uh, and they are linearly independent. Um, so that's basically a, an overview of what an orthonormal basis is. Uh, and where this becomes important is the Gram-Schmidt process where we figure out how, just given a random set of vectors, uh, how we can make an orthonormal basis out of them. But it's important to remember what they are. So you just remember this. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series and any of the other math-related videos on our channel. If you're not subscribed to our channel, click this link right here. For more help with linear algebra, check out Worldwide Differential Equations with Linear Algebra by Robert McCohen or Elementary Linear Algebra by Bruce Cooperstein. Both are available at an affordable price in digital formats on our website. Just click this link right here.